Hi, in our previous video, we have gone through uh, slowly changing dimensions type 1. Now, in this video, we will see uh, type 2 slowly changing dimension. So, in type 2 slowly changing dimension, we will track the history of source changes. So, to track that history, we will create a new additional record in the target database. So, nothing but we will maintain complete history of the changes. So, to track those changes, we will insert a new record into the target table. So, to track that kind of changes, uh, usually we use some indicators and dates to identify the particular period. So, finally, in type 2 dimensions, so there could be only one active record and we may see uh, multiple inactive records. So, so as we are inserting uh, multiple records for changes, uh, it's uh, somewhat expensive database operation. So most of the times we will not recommend this type 2 dimensions in our real time scenarios. So we will now we will see some sample examples. So here just see this is a product table. I have this table in our source source database. So product ID, product name and, and unit price. So and in our target table I am taking one serial number that is a surrogate key and same product ID, product name, unit price and coming to that some extra fields this is a record status it will represent whether the record is in active state or no and coming to that dates effective and termination dates so it will indicate the particular period of time where the record is in active state suppose uh, in, a, in the source uh, for a particular product if the price changes some 100 to 150 then in the target so for this particular record we will make the status as i and the termination date nothing but the uh, price is updated on so and so date that is 10-1-2014 and here we will insert a new record the surrogate key 6 same values here the new updated value price is 150 and recursive say and the, the new record effective and termination dates here the effective date will be the current date and termination date here I am taking the termination date as 12-31-1999 so if you see this inactivate record based on these dates we can identify this particular uh, product price is uh, 100 rupees in so and so this period and coming to the next period the price is 150 so now for this kind of operation nothing but in general we will call it as type 2 dimension and for this we will uh, we will duplicate the same operation in informatica now so for this i am taking two databases one is source database and another one is target database in sql server and I am creating the table with product ID, product name and unit price and I am inserting 5 product values so here 100 to 104 5 products we have and in the similar in target table I am creating the same structure with additional fields those will track uh, uh, record status and period particular period of time so I am going to that informatica percentage designer so in designer in sources I am importing from the database so in this ODPC connection I have my source, bits, uh, source database I am selecting the product table and coming to the target designer I am importing the target so it is the target this word is connection is pointed to target database this target table name is product underscore link yeah now I am creating a new mapping in mapping designer going to the mapping state m underscore product underscore team underscore type 2 Yeah, 
I'm importing the source into a uh, mapping designer. Yeah. Now I'm taking that expression transformation. XP and source product. It is for source. taking a lookup transformation that is for target so here I will compare the source data with the target data if, if I found any matches with the product and finding mismatches on unit price then I will inactivate the existing record and insert a new record with the new unit price if the product is not found in the target table then I will insert that product into target table So here I have taken the current class. I am mapping these three ports into this hookup transformation. I will join source and target tables on product ID. Here this is the target table product ID and this is the source table product ID. Yeah, now I am taking the expression transformation. So, in this expression transformation, I will apply my compute logic whether the record uh, that should be inserted into target table or that should perform any update operations. I will decide uh, that uh, I will implement that logic in this expression transformation. So <coughs> from this, I am taking current flag effect to date, all this into expression transformation. So here I am not taking the termination date into uh, expression transformation because the termination date uh, could be the current date or 12.31.1999. So that I can take from a new variable and that for that I can assign a sys date and uh, for I can I can take another variable for 12.31.99.99 value. That's so, some other end date. And I'm taking uh, source fields into this expression transformation. Now uh, to de to decide whether the particular operation is for insert or update, I will create new flags. So I will create one insert flag that will decide whether the record should insert or update insert flag. So it is an output variable. For this I am taking an class if is null. This product ID. This is from lookup table. Product ID. If it is null then I will insert the record for that I am taking the flag as y otherwise I will update the record so I am validating the expression so here uh, the product ID null means the record does not exist in the target table means there is a new new product detail that we are inserting into the target table and I will take another flag to check whether the record exists in the target table that is update flag For that, uh, the product ID should be matched in both the tables. So, product ID equal to target product ID, and unit price from target 
is not equal to unit price from source then I am, I am taking update operation else insert so again I am validating this question there were no errors here I will take another two new variables one is for the current date if you see uh, for the newly inserting the card, the effective date should be the current date and also for any if you if, if you have any updates to the existing product we are inactivating the existing record and inserting the new record for the new record also the effective date should be the current system so here I am taking the system timestamp so here that I need to change this data type to date date time from dates system timestamp there were no errors and finally I am taking the another variable for termination date uh, by default for all new records I am taking the termination date as 1231999 for that I am taking another new variable the name term date the data type as date for this I will take to date function twelve thirty one double nine. I'm converting this to MMDD date format. Okay. So here I have declared four new variables. One is for insert and another one is for update and uh, another two for date operations now I will take a router transformation to route the record to insert and update uh, transformations router product view So for this I need uh, source values, all source three, this two, this three for inserting the new inserting new records. We should for new records we should have all these three values. And unit price of the target. So nothing but if we if we have any changes to that existing unit price, uh, for inactivating record we will have that uh, existing unit price and for the updating record for, for updating records we should have that existing unit price and for the inserting records we should have the new unit price so for that I am mapping this unit price to uh, router transformation and also we need this effective date and coming to that the four field that we created ok so I am taking for router I am defining two new groups one is for the insert and another one is for the update so for this I am taking the value as y and and again i will create a new group for updates 